Nobody likes paying taxes. It's just a simple fact. But luckily, there's a government program out there that allows you to get some of your tax money back, especially if you own something like this. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what that is. But first, let's go over some of the taxes that someone like me has to pay if you own something like this. Starting out, registration. And in Oregon, you see I've got two plates on this truck. That's my commercial vehicle registration that you have to have for trucks over 26,000 pounds with the Commerce and Compliance Division. There's a tax right there. Trucks like mine that are a tow truck also have to have the tow registration. That there is Commerce Compliance Division commercial plate. This here is DMV tow registration. That means I get to register this truck twice through two different departments of the government. Actually, now I think about three different ways because this truck also has tow plus registration, which allows it to haul cargo when it's just a normal fifth wheel configuration, as well as be a tow truck when it's in the tow configuration. Now, light duty tow trucks under 26,000 pounds don't have to have the Commerce and Compliance Division plates. They just have to have the DMV tow plates. Uh, that plate right there allows us to conduct our towing operations. It's our tow business license. Allows us to do towing and recovery from the side of the road, tow abandoned vehicles when authorized by the proper authorities, tow unregistered vehicles, unregistered trailers, stuff like that as needed. It's, uh, you, you can't operate a tow truck in the state of Oregon without that. So there's two different taxes right there. On top of that, we have the yearly heavy highway use tax for anyone who owns a large vehicle over 56,000 pound gross vehicle weight has to pay $550 a year to the federal government uh, for the extra wear and tear that our vehicles put on these highways. But if you're in the state of Oregon, as you can see by my Oregon plate right there, there's another tax on top of that, and that is our mileage tax. Because in the state of Oregon, that plate right there comes with a mileage tax tied to it where every month we have to report the amount of miles we drove in the state of Oregon that month and pay a tax on those miles. I'll put right down here on the screen somewhere uh, what my current tax rate per mile is for this truck. There's also a tax tied to all the fuel that goes in the tanks of this thing, and that's a lot. So as you can see, if you run a big truck like this, especially in the state of Oregon, the taxes start to add up really fast. But luckily there is a program that helps you get some of that tax money back, and it is called Get Out and Work For It. Because the state needs services too, and services like this are paid for by those taxes. This truck here, for example, lost a rear end. You gotta think this is a plow truck all winter heavy sand hopper in the back loaded up plow on the front pushing through snow and slick icy conditions they got the power divider locked up makes sense that the rear end needs to be replaced every once in a while and uh, you can see they got the intermediate shaft pulled out so that it is movable and then i got it hooked up here on the zack lift and we're towing it into the shop you see i just got it chain slung here super easy hookup this truck has the mac volvo suspension in it, it this is a really good suspension for a dump truck because it, it's that upside down leaf spring is really tough, allows a whole lot of articulation. That articulation lets it get good traction in unfavorable conditions. So very good suspension. The only problem is you gotta figure out how to keep these things sitting level and not tilt back and forth while you tow it from the rear. So what I do is I come up here with my big chains, choke around the rear axle housing, come forward under the hitch plate. You can see under this one here better. Let me pop this off, you see really good. Comes up underneath the hitch plate, and drops into the chain fork slot on our fancy multi-use zack lift receivers here. These receivers are now available on zack lift's website. Uh, they don't look quite like this. The, the, this is the prototype version. The actual production version has one more very big improvement to them that would make it even way easier to use than these ones. But you see no forks needed, no adapters. The receivers stand right up and become your chain forks. I'll have to hook that back up. And we just got it chain slung off the rear, steering wheel tied straight. Super easy, fast hookup, 10 minutes and you're out of there down the road. Speaking of down the road, that's exactly where we're gonna head. Beautiful spring day here along the river, in the mountains, looking at the trees. Let's go enjoy some scenery. Beautiful day for a drive in the woods. It is so nice up here. We're taking it easy down the hill because obviously we don't have brakes on that truck that we're towing. But if you really get to thinking about it, what this weighs and what that truck back there weighs together um, is what this truck's axles are rated to weigh completely on their own. So I have the braking power for the weight that I am right now, but it's uh, just all on this end and not that end back there. Either way, we gotta take it easy. And here's a little trick. If you want your engine brake to be a little bit more powerful, Turn on your engine fan. That engine fan, <laughs> you out here. That engine fan takes, what is it? 
40, 50 horsepower, something like that. I don't know, there's some insane number of how much horsepower that engine fan actually takes to turn. So when you turn the engine fan on, it helps slow down the engine. That was something we used to do. We ran in the really, really steep hills back in Northern California. We had like 16 and 18 percent grades at this one site we would always haul equipment to. And we would turn the engine fans on coming down the hill just to give that much more engine braking power. Because we were heavy up there all the time too, hauling equipment on those grades. So we moved really, really slow and we used every bit of braking power we could. But you'll feel the difference if you turn this off. Speed and RPM are slowly starting to increase. Turn it back on. And it'll start to bring it back down. Slowly, but it's dropping. It makes a difference. You'll notice the same thing when you're climbing a hill. Uh, if you're climbing a hill and you just barely got the gear you're in, but like it, your foot's to the floor, but it's holding it, but you're not gaining any, if that engine fan kicks on, you're gonna start dropping RPM really quick. That's when you really notice how much horsepower it takes to turn that fan. So we've made it down to the bottom where we get to see things like this beautiful covered bridge here. And then just up ahead here, we get to roll on to some of the DOT scales where we get to talk about yet another tax that I have to pay to run this truck. And that is my annual overweight permits. Cause this truck right here is heavy all on its own. This thing is 36,000 pounds. That is divided up as uh, 13,600 on the steer axle and 22,400 pounds back there on the drive axles empty which as you're about to see right here, does not leave a whole lot of room uh, before I hit 34,000 pound legal weight limit on the drive axles when I put a load on it. So every year I buy envelopes like this that are full of permits that allow me to go to 46,000 pounds back on those drive axles because like a lot of things in life, it's all legal if you're willing to pay enough. So we're gonna roll onto the scale here in Oregon, they leave the readers on pretty much all of them, which is super nice. We are, well, let's uh, let's see what we are gross weight too. Off the brakes, 7,700 pounds on the steer axle. And we'll pull up here to my drive axles where we're gonna be well overweight. But like I said, it's all legal for a price. Drive axles on the scales and we are 38,000 350 pounds so we will add that in here now we will put it back in gear see what that dump truck weighs on its front axle creep on up front axle of dump trucks on the scale at 15,950 pounds so we will add in 15,950 for a total gross weight of 62,000 pounds. And like I said before, this truck has a gross vehicle weight rating of 18,000 pounds on the steer axle and 46,000 pounds on the rear axle. That's what it's rated for. That equals, what is that? 18 plus 46 equals 64,000 pounds. So we are well within the factory braking performance specs of this truck and the weight it is rated to be totally on its own. Meaning I have the braking power to control this whole setup just fine, even though that big heavy thing back there is free rolling with no brakes. Probably starting to realize this whole trucking towing thing, especially the towing side of things, it's really one big numbers game, that's all it is. And the more we know about those numbers, the more we can understand what's going on. Like in this case, now that we know the gross weight we are from those scales back there, we can subtract my truck's empty weight and that tells us that the truck we're towing is 26,000 pounds, which makes perfect sense because that's exactly what I would expect a tandem axle dump truck to weigh. We also know that that dump truck back there is 15,950 pounds. Let's call it six, uh, yeah, 16 for easy numbers. That means my underreach back there is lifting and holding 10,000 pounds worth of weight on the back of my truck. Now you're probably questioning, how are we 
38, almost 39,000 pounds on my drive axles if I'm 22,400 pounds empty and only lifting 10,000 pounds. On a tow truck, that's because of the teeter-totter effect. That underreach sticks out the back of the truck, meaning the more weight we put on it, the more weight we pull off of our steer axle, and every pound that comes off of our steer axle goes onto our drive axles. So when we are loaded up with this truck, the, the front axle gets lighter. The heaviest the front axle of this truck will ever be is when it's empty. And if you want to know how much weight you're going to be on your drive axles when you're towing something, the amount of weight you're lifting plus the amount of weight transfer off your front end gives you the number that you're going to be on your back end. So we got 22,400 pounds plus the 10,000 pounds that we're lifting. That's 30, 32,400 pounds. Then we go to my front axle, which is 13,600 pounds empty. Uh, now weighs 7,700 pounds. That's 5,900 pounds that we pulled off of my front axle. Add that back onto the rear axle. Let's call that again six to make easy numbers. And we're right back into that 38, 39,000 pound range, which is what the scale says we weighed on the drive axles. All the math checks out. There's gonna be some variables back and forth because of how much fuel I have in my tanks, which are up here towards the front of the truck and affect weight transfer. How much gear I have in the Zach lift body right now, where it's located in the body, it's always gonna float back and forth a little bit as far as what my empty numbers actually are. But the math checks out. By doing that math, I know that I am good on my drive axles. Of course, I could have just looked at the weight gauge on my dash that tells me that we're well within legal weights for my pay to play permits here. But I'm a nerd and I like nerding out on numbers like that and I just like information in general knowing how stuff works. So all that's really pointless if the weight gauge tells you you're good. Either way, we're good and we're almost to the shop here. Okay, this is Tech Equipment in Coburg, Oregon. And some of you probably remember that these are the guys who finally found the problem with and fixed my rollback after that eight month long disaster. And if you wanna talk about a numbers game, you should see the amount of numbers that someone's stupid mistake cost both my company and theirs. But either way, that was a totally different location. The guys here are flat out awesome. Service manager is one of the best to work with I've ever seen, and as you can imagine, being in the uh, towing industry, I meet a lot of service managers. So uh, we're gonna go in, make sure this is where they want us to drop this thing off. Probably be fine, because it does move and drive if you've got the interlock locked in in those diffs, and then we'll get it unloaded. All right, since it runs and drives and moves, as long as you got the diff locked in, right here in the middle is just fine. So we'll start by grabbing our light bar off of it here. I unhooked the wrong one right there is what I did. This is a wireless light bar. A lot of people have asked. Uh, I've said it a few times, but people ask every time. It's totally wireless. It runs off of a transmitter that is plugged into the back of the truck. Bungee cords onto the back back there. Has its own battery right here. And if we look back here, this is the transmitter that plugs into my trailer brake outlet. So whatever my truck does, this does just like trailer lights. So that'll sit there. We get our safety chains off. And they just feed right back up in here. Just like that, we'll get that one. We go around the other side. Come in here, pop our steering wheel straps. We just had to hold the steering wheel straight while we tow it backwards because there's nothing else holding it straight. I put three on this one because normally I have the two straps to the wheel going back um, to hold the wheel each way. And then I run the seatbelt through as a safety, but the seatbelt wouldn't reach in this one. So I just ran a third one as a safety. The two hold it in two separate directions and then it's just one general safety in case one of those two slips. So normally I don't do three, but this time I did three. So now we can set this thing down. Those chains will loosen up. And we can pop 
these out of the hooks right here. And then, oh, you know what I totally forgot to do? Completely forgot. One very important step, that was dumb. So we're gonna hook it back up. We're gonna lift it back up. Ten thousand pounds being lifted right there, and then ten thousand pounds being, or twenty-six thousand pounds being shoved out away from us before we set it down. Now we pop these off, and if you're wondering why I do that, it's so that I can then do this, pull it back in and then fold it up without having to drive my truck forward. That's why. So this here will go up and up and up and up. And then we'll fold this in. Some people have commented on how slow my fold tilts. When theirs goes down super fast, it's because this is an actual power tilt, not a fold cylinder. So this this is rated for its full underreach rating of 36,000 pounds and all that stuff in any up or down tilt position. So it moves slower because it's much stronger. Great. Now the truck's gonna drip water. But we'll pop these off just fine. So then we take this. We got it. The hook's gotta go straight to fit. Comes up out of there. Same thing for this one. And now I know someone, why are you not coming out there? Someone has probably commented about my whole tax rebate program thing, saying, Casey, you're not actually getting tax money back for nothing. You're having to work for it. And that means you're having to work and you're just getting paid to do a job. You're not actually getting your tax money back. Well, technically, the money I'm being paid for this is coming from our taxes. So, it was not, sorry, loud. It was not quick bake, because it's technically true. Even though someone thinks I'm dumb for thinking I'm getting tax money back for nothing. It gave me a catchy title that a lot of people who wouldn't normally click on a video about a tow truck clicked on and I got new viewers out of it. It's almost like there's like some strategy or something behind this whole YouTube thing. Especially since this video was posted right after tax time and jumped up ahead in my queue of videos so that it's posted when taxes are fresh on everybody's mind. So this thing's all done and dropped off. We're ready to get out of here that quick. Um, got my light bar, got my steering wheel straps, chains are put away, everything's folded up. It's really that simple. It also allows me to list this video in the finance category of YouTube, which monetizes much higher than my normal autos and vehicles category. Well, sometimes it's that simple, not every time. But yeah, it's almost like there's some sort of strategy over uh, thumbnails and titles and when things are posted and what things are about, just like I've said, taxes and tax so many times in this video. And the YouTube algorithm, or the AI of YouTube, uh, not only reads within the description and titles to know what a video is about, it also listens to the words that are said. And now that I've said tax so many times in this, it's gonna put this video in front of people who are also interested in tax stuff, right in the middle of tax season, especially since it's titled, how to get your tax money back after a whole bunch of people just paid taxes. It's gonna push this out to a whole different audience, like I said, who would have never normally clicked on a video like this. The other thing I did was purposely wait till the end of the video here to address that fact so that the people who are gonna comment about it already made those comments, the algorithm sees those comments, and that helps my audience engagement numbers. Since we're talking about YouTube strategy tricks, there's one more trick I'm gonna show you here, and that is how you use an irresistibly cute kid to say things like this. Like and subscribe.